everybody's concerned about security. Everybody's concerned about, oh, I'm moving to another country, to a foreign country from the United States or Australia or Canada or wherever. Am I going to be safe? Am I, you know, how am I going to know uh, what's the best way to protect myself and my family? So I had a meeting with this, this company here called Ultimate Security. I met Michael and Amy, the co-owners of Ultimate Security. They, he is a retired SWAT officer, deputy sheriff from Florida in the United States and multiple years of experience, vast experience and knowledge about law enforcement, gun safety, how to defend yourself, how to protect yourself, and how to be safe and secure right here in Ecuador. And they've been here for a while and I never even knew they existed. They do monitoring of businesses and restaurants. And I'm going to share my video with you that I did yesterday at their training facilities. And we got a chance to sit down in their office and talk about their business, the company themselves, and safety and security. And as soon as I come back, I'll share it with you. Hey! Hello there. I'm sitting here here at Ultimate Security here in Monta, Ecuador, and I'm sitting here with my new friends, Amy and Michael, the co-owners of Ultimate Security. You guys started this business three years ago, I think you told me. You're a former cop too, right? You yes. Were, uh, you were, where, where were you? Uh, 27 uh, years a deputy sheriff in South Florida. In South Florida. And you were in the, on the SWAT team too, That's right? Correct. I believe, yeah. So you had quite a career. If I remember right, you showed me a notebook that has all your certificates. Yes. Is that close by? I did, Don. Would you like to see it? Yeah, I want to see okay. it. I want to show it to the audience. Right. <laughs> just, I, I, usually people, when they show their certificates, it's mm -hmm. a, like a little one-inch notebook. Mm -hmm. But look at this. <laughs> this is like, this is, this is way a, a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> so. As Michael says, it has thump factor. It has what? Thump factor. Thump factor. Yeah, when you put it on the desk instead of it. Yeah. It's very loud. <laughs> so, so, what gave you the idea of coming here and starting a security business? Well, Amy and I owned a security business in South Florida, and uh, it was very successful. So when we moved here, we really came here to retire, mm -hmm. but we decided that we wanted to make a difference here in Ecuador and open our own security company and tried to come in with the attitude of being very professional, having customer service, and really caring about our clients. Security is very important here, and a lot of people talk about it. I get emails from people on my channel asking me, Don, I mean, there are some people that, that think that this is a very dangerous place to live. I tell people it's not any different than the United States. There's crime here, there's petty crime here, there's major crime, there's been you know, crimes of opportunity, there's been mafia hits, all kinds of stuff. And before you guys came here, what did Monta have besides the police department? Well, we moved here six years ago, ironically, Amy and I, right after the earthquake. So oh, really? when we came here, we've seen huge growth uh, in Manta, um, especially with um, residential and the businesses. And what would take you 15 minutes to get to the store now takes you 25 because there's just so many more people here. Everyone's flocking to Ecuador. It's very um, economical to live here. Yeah. The people are extremely nice and the weather, of course, is always beautiful. Yeah. Who's in charge? My wife. Amy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but now, but when you were in Stilling County or in Florida and you were thinking about coming here, did you think you were going to do this? No, we actually came here with the intent of retiring. Yes. And uh, it just, you know, w whatever brought us to it, it just mm -hmm. kind of evolved. And, and uh, Yeah, and you're not a Mickey Mouse operation. How many people do you have on your payroll, if I may ask? We have 123 people. Right 123 now. people. And everybody's going to see from the other footies that I shot today at the training facilities that, that I, I wasn't aware that these were all actually employees of your, your company. And yes, and that would only be represent probably about forty percent of them because the other sixty percent are working. So they're in the field, right? They're, they're in, in the field, field working on duty. Correct. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, what type of services do you offer? Well, first of all, we offer monitoring of alarm systems. 
We offer monitoring of camera systems. We also offer what's called a megaphone system, where from our central monitoring center, we could actually speak over the megaphone. And if we see somebody bad or doing something wrong, we could actually get right on the megaphone and uh, speak to them directly. And it's funny because when you watch the videos, you actually see the bad people running because it, it freaks them out. They don't know if there's a police helicopter above them. Um, they, they don't know where this voice is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, and we also offer uh, guard services, physical security. We do um, bodyguard service. We do custodials, which is um, transporting very expensive items from point A to point B to make sure nothing happens. Um, and we do guard service for residential, private, and of course the majority would be for businesses. So if I go to the bank and I need to withdraw $20,000 to go buy a car, could I call you guys and have somebody come with me and be with me the whole time I'm carrying that cash and you know, because there was a lady that got robbed here, 30 grand. Wow. A couple of years ago, mm -hmm. right over close to where I live. And mm -hmm. the, the, the bank offered her an escort and she refused it. Wow. wow. And she got, she lost it. They, right. somebody followed her and she even took a taxi, but they followed her in the taxi mm -hmm. and it got her 30 grand. Wow. Yeah. yeah, Don, we'll do that um, for anybody. There's no limited time uh, mm -hmm. being little or a lot. We will take on any client from small to big. We're, we're not into that. I, I prefer actually um, getting to know the people and word of mouth spreads. We just started a new program, started this, uh, that's called the Special Response Team. With that program, um, I don't really want to get into the cost, but it's very right. cheap. Yeah. And uh, you pay a yearly fee, and then if you have a situation of any type of emergency anywhere in the Manta area, uh, we respond with our um, security officers, and it's been very effective, and it's a peace of mind to help people, even if you break down the side of the road in the middle of the night, we'll come and change a tire. If you have a medical distress, we're trained in CPR and first mm -hmm. aid. Okay. And you have armed guards too, right? Yes, yes. armed okay. and unarmed. Some right. people prefer the armed and a lot prefer not because they don't want to have the liability or the high profile of coming in, say, to a restaurant and they see an armed security guard, that's, that gets people nervous. So okay. a lot of places are actually unarmed. Yeah. Let's talk about security for a minute. People ask me all the time, you know, about the petty crime that takes place here. I've been a victim of petty crime two times since I've been in Ecuador. I had a knife pulled on me in Cuenca and I had a guy following me down the street. I think he was looking for an opportunity to sucker punch me. And fortunately I managed to get out of it. I had my pepper spray with me and he saw it. How, what's your advice to people that come here that are worried about dealing with petty crime? I always tell them, just use common sense. What do you think? Right. You know, what do you say? Well, our special response team would definitely be excellent mm -hmm. because with the special response team, we will come out directly to you. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be one thing that we could do. The other thing is you have to, when you say common sense, everybody's common sense is different. So mm -hmm. things like flipping your ring around, mm -hmm. carrying your wallet inside your front pocket versus your back pocket, mm -hmm. um, Amy, puts her bag over her shoulder and we hold hands on that side. So if mm -hmm. someone were to come behind us, we, we formed a, a chain. Um, the one thing that drives Amy and I crazy is when we go to grocery stores and we see women leaving their purses in the shopping in the cart, cart and they walk away and I'll go up to them and they understand me English and or Spanish. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, you know, that's not good. That's very dangerous. You should not be doing that and they are not concerned about it. And they, basically, don't make yourself become a victim. Yeah. Don't look for the opportunity for someone to victimize you. Right. And another thing that you always remind people of is that you need to have situational awareness. Yes. So um, originally, I'm from New York City, so if you're walking in Manhattan and you don't have situational awareness, there are gonna be problems when somebody is gonna bump into you accidentally, but not really, and they can mug you. But if you have that awareness, 360 all the time you'll be fine mm -hmm. you know I find and maybe you will have seen this too I, I like when I was in Cuenca and I was in this trail and I knew I was in an area that I shouldn't have been in but I did it anyway mm -hmm. 
You know, why? What? Why? Why do people do that? I mean, what? You're the experts in security. I mean, you ever get a straight answer from somebody on it's, why they? That's a great question. I think, yeah. Don, people want to be able to live life and not worry mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. about what's going to happen to them. Yeah. And by nature, we're we're risk takers just by nature. And I think people don't want to be limited. I mean, look at COVID, how COVID affected so many people. You had to take it seriously, but you still had to live life. So what we're finding is people, when crime is bad, they don't continue to live life. If you don't continue to live life, then the bad people are winning. Yeah. That's what they want. And we don't want that. Yeah. You know, we want people to be able to go to the store. We want people to go to the movie theater, to the restaurant, not have to worry that they're going to get mugged or, or you know, mm -hmm. followed. And what about that? Uh, it won't happen to me syndrome, you know, that, that was my excuse. It won't happen to me. They're not, that guy's not going to bother me. And sure enough, right. He did. Yeah. We're uh, sorry that happened to you, but I guess hope, you know, be, be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. Yeah. And again, like Amy said, it's situational awareness. You gotta be aware of your surroundings and everyone's, you know, I think common sense is the least of the common senses because everybody's different when it comes to that. But when you go out at night, travel in, in groups, don't put yourself in areas that are dark. Um, you know, you just don't want to put it out there where you're looking for trouble. Right. And we're, we don't, we're not proponents of looking for trouble. The way we train our security officers are to immediately diffuse the situation and resolve it. Okay. Not, not for it to linger on per the training that you saw today. Right, right. La mejor manera para que Michael se sienta más cómodo de esta manera es sentir el arma. Él necesita saber dónde está el arma. Okay. Slow motion. The first thing I want to do is get away from the gun. Vamos a hacerlo en, en, en cámara lenta. Lo primero que hay que hacer es que el cuerpo salga de la posición donde va a disparar el arma. So if he shoots, it's going to go that way. Cosa que si él se le escapa un tiro por la reacción del movimiento que va a realizar Michael, se, se eh, dispara, el, la munición va a salir disparada hacia ese lugar. I'm going to grab the gun like this. Él va a tomar el arma. I'm going to come up and under. Va a venir desde abajo y hacer ese movimiento. Terminado. Okay. If I'm walking down the street, even in the daytime, if somebody comes up to me and gun or no gun, and he demands my phone and my wallet and my, what's your advice? Well, we recommend the special response team program. Uh, you program in our number to central monitoring. Uh, central monitoring picks up the phone. You provide them with your name. Once you do that, we have your, your, uh, your name, your address, your phone number, your blood type, any allergies, emergency contacts. So we're immediately going to call the police, get them responding. If we, um, we then contact our response team and the, the quickest person there, the closest person will immediately respond and assist you in any shape, way or form. And not just at the scene, but to get you home, to help you with the police report. Obviously we can't do that. You, right. you have to do that or the client has to do that. But it's a program that is it's an immediate response we we promise within a certain amount of time we'll be there and we know how to handle i don't want to say every situation but a lot of the situations that come mm -hmm. up. so that's the answer i was looking for but i'm also looking for another answer too mm -hmm. the what do you do immediately if a guy approaches me and says give me everything you got or i'm gonna beat you that's a really good question you know to well, just give him what i got and hope for the best or Right. Coming from a law enforcement standpoint, I don't think anybody's life is worth material items. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is when you carry your purse or your wallet, don't carry large amounts of money and say going out with 10 credit cards, maybe carry one credit card. Mm -hmm. Please make sure that on your person does not have your home address, things like that, because that could really be a problem. Um, if you're carrying keys, don't label them. This is the house key. This is a car right. key because if they get your keys, um, and the other thing is the key could, could be used as a weapon. So when you're walking to your vehicle, you have the key in your knuckle and that can be used as a weapon. Mm -hmm. So little mm -hmm. things like that, just to, to help you to be safer. But again, everybody's at a different level as to what they're going to do. But my recommendation coming from law enforcement is your life is not worth a material item. Yeah. Yeah. And especially somebody else's material item. Sure. That's sure. our job is to protect those kind of things because that's what we get paid and trained to do. But So what do I do then if I've been robbed now and the guy's running down the street with my cell phone? Yeah, that's a really good, good point. Uh, but you want to 
well, I'm hoping someone that's good natured here will come to your aid, which mm -hmm. I think you mentioned in one of your incidents, yeah. somebody did. Yeah, uh, people that. here seem to come together <clears throat> when there's tragedies. And we've seen that also, even as simple as when we first moved here, we knew hardly any Spanish and people would come up to us and help us to translate. Mm -hmm. So I think, ho I'm hoping that it's gonna bring out the good in people. But obviously if they take your phone, you just need to get to a safe place. Yeah. And generally there's a business open or a house and, and someone to assist you because your phone without, if you're not trained, your phone's like your lifeline. Yes. And, and that's gonna, you know, that's an unfortunate because people never think, well, they're gonna take the phone. Usually they're gonna take your phone, your camera, your watch, your jewelry, mm -hmm. your purse. That's, that's the main thing they're looking for. And generally when you give it to them, they're, they're, gonna, leave, they're gonna leave you alone. They just mm -hmm. wanna get away. Yeah. But that's not every time, of course. Do you recommend people carrying pepper spray? Pepper spray is a great tool. It creates distance, which is what you want to do, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very effective. Um, when when I uh, went through training for both the military and the police department, it was as bad as being shot. It's wow. it's very painful. It's cayenne pepper in your eyes, and it will definitely um, immobilize a person. But the thing you have to be careful is if you're outside and it's windy, you can get hit with it as well. Yeah. And I've seen that where the person tried to hit the bad guy and it sprayed in their face. They became incapacitated, and then the bad guy was able. Made it even to, worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I sprayed myself with pepper spray from inside my car. Oh no. Because I didn't have the window all the way down, and I ended up hitting the window instead of the guy. It was a road rage incident in Arizona, but you know, it's like some people. I mean, I think to myself, get upwind. If you can think about this stuff, I mean, right. sometimes people are going to go straight into panic mode. And then at that point, you just give them everything you got and hope for the best. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, is it legal to carry a gun here? No, it is not. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely not legal. You have to go through certain processes. Um, here, you have to have 120 hour uh, guard school mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. we they have to pass a test with the firearm and we're constantly training them as well. There's all kinds of permits, which we have uh, mobile permits, stationary permits. It's a very, very long, expensive process. Okay, all right. Because I get that question a lot too, <laughs> you know. And I always tell them no. So I just say no, it's not, and I try not to uh, talk about it too much. In terms of advice for elderly people that come in here, I mean, of course, a lot of the, the elderly seniors are not going to be out walking around at night right. anyway, but some things have happened in broad daylight too right here very true you know um what's your advice to the, to to them as far as how to be secure how to be safe how to feel safe because i don't want these people to worry coming here i want right. them to feel like it's a safe place to, to come right Don, you know? that's a really good question they have to have a support system they have to have emergency contacts mm -hmm. that, that are on them. Maybe they could have a, a bracelet with maybe in a, a local emergency mm -hmm. contact. And we had a couple of people approach us and say, wow, you should really start an elderly division because someone had passed away and in this particular woman had no support system and they found her passed away in her house weeks later oh. and they didn't even know who to call. And she's from the United States. One of our clients said, you really need to open like an elderly division. So mm -hmm. what we said is, with a special response team, that could be something like a neighbor. And and the one thing about our company is we have three supervisors, an operations manager, myself and Amy, and we do go around and check on our clients. So if we know someone needs special attention due to special needs, um, disabilities, or elderly, we go by and check on them, and we don't even charge for that. Yeah. I mean, it's just something that we, we do for the, for the clients and um, the ones that have family, and they say, hey, can you go by and check on my elderly mom she lives in a condo on the beach sure no yeah. problem we'll do that but it's to have a good support system and to have some some form if something does happen we got to be able to get a hold of it or the police have to be able to get a hold of somebody mm -hmm. and that's where there seems to be a problem because there's no you know or if they have a license it's not or a license or a said it doesn't go back to where they actually live mm. so they need to keep all their information updated if if i need a police officer I'm in trouble. Something's happened to me. Who knows what? I've had an accident. I got hit by a car or got robbed and I need police, but I don't call the police because I can't speak the language. Right. Can we call you guys? Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're 24 seven. We're bilingual. Uh, we'll have a rapid response and we genuinely care. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's real good to know. Mm -hmm. You don't take that diamond outside, do you? What, my ring? Oh, yeah. Yes, he's my bodyguard. <laughs> 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 and if I'm in a very bad area, like you were mentioning, um, maybe a dark alley or a desolate area, I just go like that. So, I mean, I've worn this on the subways of New York City. I just yeah. go like that. Oh, uh, somebody told me also that the thugs here, the perps, the criminals mm -hmm. do not like the jails here. No, they're really bad. Are they? And when they when they riot, uh, traditionally, you know, anywhere from 100 to 200 people uh, perish. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets very violent. That's the same thing as they get killed. They get yes. killed. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to say it in a more. Uh, this you is know. the Don Shader channel. You can say it like it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How about? Yeah, they get. I remember when I first came here, there was a prison riot going on in Wycombe. Sixty-five prisoners lost their lives in mm -hmm. that thing. Yes. And my first thought was, uh, what's the problem? But, you know, <laughs> exactly. It's like, exactly. You know, they're in the right place. You know, but no, there's probably. So you're saying you don't have a problem with bad guys killing bad guys, right? Nah, I don't have a problem. With that. <laughs> I don't do it. You know, so that just you know, well, I, I won't. I don't want to be politically incorrect. So. <laughs> But okay. a lot of people have written to me and asked me about the shootings that have taken place here recently. There's been some high profile uh, shootings that at first people were, the rumor mill was that it was just random violence, people shooting people for robberies or whatever. But it turns out that they were actually hits. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Paid yes. hits. Do you know about those? Uh, we we do know about them, mm -hmm. and what we could say without getting too much into detail is a lot of times the hits involve people owing people money, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. drugs, and people getting involved in road raid incidents mm -hmm. or uh, brawls that expand out, and then also you have the you know come home and the husband or wife are cheating with another person and. Mm -hmm. It, it builds up, but a, a lot of what's going on is territory mm -hmm. for the gangs, territory for yeah. for the you know, and th and that's that's something that law enforcement and military uh, deal with. Yeah, and um, we just come from a security standpoint that we just try to do our best to protect our our customers Correct. and their families yeah. and 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 you know the people that they service because a lot of them are customer based. Right, but uh, a lot of uh, what's been happening are really hits. So the general population doesn't have to be totally worried that they're just, that people are just going around shooting people. Right, it, that's, yeah, and that's what I want them to know about. Yes, I, yes, I don't want yeah. people to think, it's, this is not the United States. There's no, not, no. You know, we have all the mall shootings and school no. shootings and random shootings here Correct. in Ecuador like they do in the States. You Correct. can't even compare the two. Correct. Correct. There, the are United no, States, there are no school shootings yeah. here right. it's exactly. yeah. at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no public, no major like shootouts. I mean, first place, I mean, there's limited guns. I know that. Mm -hmm. Only the bad people have the guns. Mm -hmm. And Okay. So I tell people, come on down. Don't worry. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we agree. Yeah. Yeah. We, totally we wouldn't be here if we felt it was unsafe right. to live here. We, Amy and I visited numerous places before we moved here. Yes. And we liked the fact that it was the American dollar. You drive on, quote, the correct side of the road. Mm -hmm. And we really liked the fact of how nice people are here. The people here are extremely nice. They're always helpful. Yes. And uh, it's more of a laid back atmosphere. So if you have high blood pressure, come here because it's probably going to go down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep. yep. I, I can testify to that myself. So. <laughs> All right, and you, your background, let's talk a little bit more about that, okay? You, how many years did you say you were involved in law enforcement? 27. That's, that's been your whole career, right? Yeah, before uh, that I worked for the power company and a telemarketing company, mm -hmm. but I always wanted to um, help people. So mm -hmm. I became a law enforcement officer and then um, right out of high school, I went into the Navy uh, and I did active duty and then I went into reserves and then I went into the army and then I finished my career in the reserves. And okay. then, um, Amy, you want to tell them real quick what you did? Well, I was a makeup artist in New York City and I did a couple of high profile, pe profile people, but most of the time I just did um, just uh, everyday people. And mm -hmm. I worked in beautiful department stores and I did a lot of weddings when I was younger. I did makeup for weddings and um, 
I came to Florida and then we came here. How did you meet this guy? Because well, she's lucky. <laughs> um, I was a member of a uh, cycling group. Yeah. And um, I had divorced my husband. Yeah. And one of the people that I was cycling with said that I'm going to set you up with somebody. And I said, well, I don't, it's okay. You don't really yeah. need to. And, yeah. Well, I know somebody that you, you, you have a lot of in common with. And uh, he set me up with Michael. And we've been together ever since. We've been together ever since, exactly. Each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're inseparable. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. This is great. I really appreciate you taking the time and allowing me to do this. So I'm standing here with Judy Harper. Everybody knows Judy Harper. If you don't live in Monta and you're an expat, you're going to know who Judy Harper is. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, you happen to be a client of Ultimate Security, right? I am. Yeah. I've been a client of theirs since I returned here in December. Oh, yeah. Um, when I got here, I found a couple of disturbing things uh, in my apartment that gave me pause. I wondered, mm -hmm. is someone climbing over the wall from the other apartments? And it was just really very alarming. I had lost my husband in January of last year, and so that took a lot of security away mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. So to then travel to another country and be here by myself, I was, I was just a little bit off balance. Mm -hmm. So I knew that Mike and Amy had started Ultimate Security. I know Michael's reputation. I lived in Palm Beach County where he was a part of the SWAT team. Yeah. Uh, he has a stellar reputation. <clears throat> They're very professional people. And I reached out to him and I asked if they could come over and assess my situation, which they immediately did. Okay. Yeah. And they hooked me up with a camera for my patio. And oh, really? I was monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if anything is amiss, they immediately contact me. Okay. Uh, they offer all different kinds of level of security. But for me, as a single woman now, yeah, yeah. and just looking for that little extra insurance right. to feel secure in my environment it's really a wonderful thing mm -hmm. without giving away too much information because we don't we, I know that some of this is um, well security is security so we don't just give out you know like how do they reach you and all this kind of stuff do they have more than one way to contact you if something let's say you're not at home and somebody's climbing the wall in your patio. I guess they're going to contact they you. They have yourself. mic services. They can actually turn on an active mic okay. uh, to the oh. to the camera, um, which is some extra assurance. It, it, we've never had to use that because I've not had any incidents mm -hmm. but uh, they have when they've noticed activity perhaps it was a workman that was out there on the patio uh, they get in touch that way I feel so secure with them now yeah. because yeah. now I can just leave my sliding glass doors open that face the ocean and yeah. and know that if there's any activity on my patio it's yeah. going to be immediate and they're discovered. monitoring you 24 7 24 7 yeah, 24 7, yeah. it's That's a good amazing. feeling so as an expat, all right, because this is what people want to know. Um, I'm trying to think of a delicate way to ask this because I don't want to scare anybody off. Oh, I mean, sure. Because we, you know, we know that petty well, crime listen, is a problem there. Security, security is an issue wherever you're at in the world yeah. right now. The world has changed, sure. and I don't see it turning for the better anytime soon. So we we have to be vigilant. Yeah. And as financial situations become more unstable uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, governments seem to be teetering. Mm -hmm. We've got to do what we can to be secure. Right. I, I feel very confident about the community I live in, but I think it would be foolhardy not to take the extra measures because having a security camera is so inexpensive. If I look yeah. at the cost of that, I mean, it's it's less than a dollar a day to have 24-hour oh, wow. security and sure. on your on your uh, for your a property. Camera. Yeah. It's really yeah. really good. So it's the initial cost of your camera, and they can supply that, or you can supply it. Mm -hmm. But they will do the installation, and yeah, it's a real good way to go for me. I feel so at ease. Sure. I. And by myself now, and yeah. anything I can do to feel better about my environment is tantamount for right. me. Right. Okay, good, good. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you, Don. Okay. So now I'm sitting here with Aldo. Is that 
Is I'm saying that right? A yeah. is A L D O. A L D O. Aldo. A Aldo. Yes. You're 100% Ecuadorian. I'm 100% Ecuadorian. But you lived in the United States for a while too, right? I did. Too, right? Yeah, I used yeah. to live in North Carolina. What did you do there? Well, I was, you know, uh, after I finished my high school, I was working in Ecuador. Yeah. And I was doing the same thing. Yeah. Well, I was you know, uh, after I finished my high school, I was trying to look at an opportunity to, to keep growing. So I, I always loved the, the United States. So that's mm -hmm. why I was spending some time there. But for some reasons, I have to come back. So How long did I'm you here. live there? Oh, I will say around two years. Two years. Yes. Okay. All right. Do you have family? Yes. Yeah. Same. Got a wife, wife, kids. I have my daughter. Your daughter. Um, yeah. Good for you. Thank you, sir. So in this business here, you are the operations manager right here at Ultimate Security. So what is your job here? What do you do? Well, basically, as operations manager, I have to be in charge of every security officer that we have. I don't like to call in guards. Cause mm -hmm. I, I always like to call in security officers, mm -hmm. so I have to be in charge of all of them. I have to be in charge of all the operations part, like coordinate the schedule, deal with the clients, deal with situations, uh, basically that. Wow. Keep improving our company. That sounds like a big job. It that is. sounds like it's a big stressful. responsibility. Yeah, I have to be responsible for every action that our security officers do at jobs location. Every word that they say, I have to be responsible for. Sure. Sure. Um, besides that, besides the security officer that we have, uh, we also do monitoring and custody. Mm -hmm. So I'm also in charge of that. We monitoring over 250 cameras. So if something happened, I have to be dealing with that situation as well. So you're pretty much on duty seven days a week, Basically, right? yes. Oh yes. I, I, you ever take I any have... time off for yourself? Or you, well, you know? that's the problem. A problem when you are young, yeah. and you have to work you gotta work your ass off basically yeah, yeah. so uh, all these people that were here today at the training mm -hmm. facility they're all employees right yes all of them. oh my god so you manage and, and then plus there's a bunch that were Everybody. on duty out mm -hmm. in the field working today we have around uh, 120 employees 120 uh, some of them were in uh, training this morning some mm -hmm. of them are working some of them are sick so yeah. yes it's a lot of people that I have to be in charge of. Yeah, how did you including get, myself? <laughs> including yourself, yeah. yeah. How did you get into this business? Well, uh, I met Michael like two years ago, and since the moment that I met him, my whole life changed. He's been teaching me a lot of stuff, not only work related about how to deal with situations. Because the problem is when you are young, you have to you have to know how to handle yourself. Yeah. When you have a lot of responsibilities that I have with this job, it's not easy. Right. Especially when you are 24. At that time, it was 23. Yeah. So, yes, I met Michael two years ago and we had a connection. We are very alike. Yeah. So, we are not talker people, we are get it done people. So, yeah. so yeah. that's why that's why I, I, I started in this company as a salesperson. Okay. Not as operations. As a salesperson, I. Yeah, getting I, getting new clients mm -hmm. and okay. I, I did a good job honestly and, and that's mm -hmm. why I was getting involved in all the processes. So that's why that's, that's why I'm here. You ever thought about going into police work? No. My dream since I was a child was to be a military. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And well I got it's not too late, you know. I know, I know I know, I know. <laughs> I want to do it. I yeah, want to do it yeah. someday. I, I really hope that that's going to be possible, but uh, sure. Sure. So, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, do you are you pretty much here? How, how much of time do you split up between being in the office and being in the field? Do you actually go out in the field and work with your security officers one-on-one? -on -one, yeah. You know, actually, I'm not an office guy. Okay. I don't That's like to good. spend time in the office. I yeah. like to be out there on the field with my security officers. Sure. Uh, I I really like to be supervising them. I need to be aware of, about everything that is going on in the company, so I try to visit them as much as possible. But I mean, in, in the position that I am, I have to be doing a lot of paperwork as well. Uh, I don't like to be, you know, only sitting behind a desk yeah. telling them what to do because you, you gotta earn respect. Mm -hmm. And the way, the proper way to do it is that you gotta show them how to do it. Sure. You, you cannot expect your security officer to do something that you will not do. Right. So I, I cannot expect right. them to shoot a bad guys if I'm not going to do it right so yes i really like to spend as much as possible with them mm -hmm. out there in the field did you get all your training from michael yes you did yes. okay so when you were growing up as a young man you did you have any idea that you would be doing this 
not really especially yeah. here in this country i mean yeah. i love my country i raised here i've been here basically 20 22 years of my life yeah. but i never imagined myself working in a security company here yeah. i'm not yeah. going to lie to you that's fantastic when somebody calls and needs help like say an elderly person falling or they got in trouble somewhere to you and if they call ultimate security for help do you get involved in those calls yes i like to be part of the problems yeah i, I really i really like to be part of the situation the yeah. dangerous situation i mean it's i, I don't try to put my own, ri own own life on risk but it really right. excites me yeah to do yeah. this stuff so every time that we have a situation and the first person to be there, Michael, is the same way. Really? We always are together. I know, I know if I'm, I'm in a war, I'm in a battle, and I'm going to look my right side, mm -hmm. I know that he's going to be there to support me and support our company. Sure, sure. Yeah. Do you ever have any situations where you think, uh, oh my God, I don't want to do this anymore? Well, we had a major situation like a month ago that uh, the bad guys were shooting at us. Oh my God. Shooting yeah. to Michael and I. And I never thought that, like, I don't want to be in this situation again. I was like, I want to leave it again. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. For your daughter, too. Well, yes. Absolutely. That's yeah. why I was saying that I, I don't try to put my own life on risk. Right. But uh, if I have to, I have to. That's the job that I signed for. Yeah. Now, are all your security officers there, are any of them bilingual? Or are they all 100% Like, no, no, no. Like, two or three of them really understand english mm -hmm. but uh they are not like very 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 good at that yeah. yeah the majority of your clients are are, are mostly ecuadorian i will say half and a half half and half, half and okay half, yeah all right yes okay you got a heck of a responsibility it seems like you have more responsibility than michael does <laughs> well he's there we won't tell him that okay <laughs> it's like uh, he's the owner. Um, well, if you see, it, if you see it yeah, in this the buck way, stops with him. He's also in charge of me. So yes. if he's in charge of me, he also have all my responsibilities. Oh, okay. As well. <laughs> so yeah. That's good. Okay. You have any? Uh, you know, I've, a lot. Of, I asked Michael and Amy about this too, and I. A lot of my audience are uh, United States, Canadian, Australian citizens that are looking to come here and retire. A lot of them are concerned about being safe, being secure, not being involved in crime, not being a victim of crime. You know, what is your advice as far as how not to be a victim here as an expat? Well, uh, I gotta put myself as, you know, in, in their side first. Mm -hmm. If you see our country, it's a paradise, especially Manta. You have the beach, you have mountains, not down far away. So for them, it's a paradise. And of course, you gotta think on your own safety. So, my advice today, and to don't be a big thing, it's that first of all, you can hire us. Yeah. We'll protect you. Yeah, we want good. Yeah. Because <laughs> we really care about our clients. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta always see the difference between business relationship and friendship. Yeah. That you gotta have, you, you have to be very clear with that. But you also have to care about your clients. You have to take it personally, and that's what we do. Okay. Some of our clients were friends before they hire us. Some of them became uh, friends after they hire us. And that's the point that we really care about our clients. So we do everything that we can yeah. to protect them. And if somehow a situation happens, we guarantee you that we will give our 100% to protect you. Mm -hmm. But uh, to don't become a, a, a victim here, I will say that... Uh, you all have to be pending about everything. You have to be checking everything around. Try to research that the people you are getting involved with, the, the people that you are doing business with, the people that you are going to buy your apartment, your house, things like that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Ecuadorian people, it's very good, but we also have very bad people that are going to try to do the worst thing to get your money. Because, yeah. if you know, if you, if you realize how... A lot of Ecuadorian people treat people like Michael and Amy mm -hmm. that they want to spend all their money here buying houses, mm -hmm. buying apartments, and people like uh, I'm not going to say names, but bad people that 
took advantage of them yeah. and they took all the money. Yeah. So yeah. that's why and Michael, people like Michael and Emma are going to talk with their friends that are, are in the state and going to say, hey, don't come here because mm -hmm. they are going to rob you up and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So I will say always research about the people that you are getting sure. contact with. Sure, sure. Have you ever thought about doing, you know, there's a, the expat community here, they have a lot of meetings. People get together and have dinners. They get together and have just to talk about life in Ecuador. Have you guys ever thought about coming out to one of those dinners and doing a talk about how to be safe and secure actually, as an expat? Actually, I went to a, a expat meeting like eight months ago. Oh, did you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was like a, they were showing a new magazine that they did. So I was there. I personally was there with okay. a supervisor, and we were basically offering our service to the expats that were there that day. Okay. And it was very good because we got some clients of it. Yeah. That's good. So if, if, if I put together a dinner sometime in the future and tell people, come and listen to Aldo from Ultimate Security, he's going to give us a brief talk about security. Would you guys be open to I would to love to do it. Okay, for sure. right, good deal. So that's it, folks. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I, I personally, I feel pretty good knowing that this company is here. And Michael and Amy are are dedicated to this service that they're providing. I, I never knew that it existed until just this last couple of weeks. So when you come here, look them up and give them a call if you have any concerns about security. You know, there are people here that have monitors on their back porches and they have these loudspeaker systems and, and they're being watched 24 seven by professionals. And if they see anything that's out of the ordinary, the perpetrator is going to know about it. Okay, that's what's kind of cool about it. As you saw from this small demonstration that I did. So anyway, if you like this channel, please subscribe. Uh, if you like the content of this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. And then you go pound some sand somewhere. That's about it. That's all I got to say for today. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Ra, 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 ra,